Well, good morning, friends. I just wanted to cut into the beginning of this video. Uh, this is the first attempt at a vlog. And um, man, when I went in, I went all in. I went big. <laughs> so um, I'm going to have to cut this up into probably three separate videos. I was thinking two, but it's turning into three as I edit. And um, I just. I just kind of wanted to let you know that don't get overwhelmed if you're looking to grow your own food or do the homestead thing. Um, yes, every day is this busy for me, but no, these aren't the things that I have to squeeze into every day. Um, so I think that this is probably going to be three different videos. Um, there's a little bit of canning, a little bit of gardening, and um, then just our regular morning chores. And so it'll be vlog episodes one, two, and three. Um, all in a day parts one two and three and um, I hope you enjoy well good morning from Hazel Bell Farm this is gonna be um, a first attempt at a vlog and I hope you'll bear with me and um, I just hope to encourage you to grow some food so Come along with me as I have a typical farm day on um, the things that need to get done. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to feed our bottle lambs. I've got some bottles here. Okay, so I'm gonna feed bottle lambs and then I'm gonna get cows rolling. Let's see if you can see my dolly girl. We have a big construction mess going on because uh, there's always there's always something. Always something. We've been working hard on this little little space right here. So here we go. Good morning, boys. Hello. Hi, Dolly girl. Hi, Dolly girl. Dolly wants some food. This little turkey, she sure likes to talk when I'm around. And that's our hazel girl. We'll be milking her this morning. And that's Mac back there in the distance. He's kind of a pain. We'll deal with him too. Hey, ja hey hazel girl. All right, first, we've got to feed these babies. All right, boys, have at it. Can I, please? Okay, so these are our two bottle lambs. They um, came to us from another farm from mamas who uh, had been accidentally bred. Oh, slow down. There we go. They had been accidentally bred and one of the mamas just didn't make enough milk. Um, the other mama was not interested in being a mama and she stomped her babies. Um, so we picked them up and we've been feeding them milk from our uh, Jersey cow, from Hazel Girl. And so they're about five and six weeks old now. Or actually they're about six and seven weeks old now. So they'll be on the bottle a few more weeks. And then um, they'll be free to graze on their own. Um, their Katahdin sheep. We have one more Katahdin sheep. She's at another farm at the Gramstead uh, family farm. And she uh, she's there being bred. So hopefully we'll be able to bring her home soon. And then she'll lamb. Uh, it'll be late lambing for by lambing, by people who know what they're doing, Sanders, but um, I think she'll be okay here. So we're excited. We're real excited to have these guys, hopefully to offer some lamb to our customers next year. You okay, buddy? I gotcha, didn't it? No more for you? No more for you? This little guy, um, he had a, a little struggle eating uh, pretty soon after we got him, and since then, um, his morning bottles, he doesn't usually finish. You can see he's left some <laughs> He's going to come say hi to you. <laughs> ah. All right. Okay, so we are going in the milk room where I keep our milking supplies. Next up is going to be getting Hazel ready to milk. So here we go. All right. Here's some plants we're gonna look at a little bit later today. Hope they're doing okay. And the cooch birds, the cooch chickens. So it's Hazel's turn in the stanchion right now and I'm gonna go ahead and get her hooked up. And then I thought I would answer a question I get pretty frequently and that is, um, what do you feed your dairy cows? Uh, Cause we're not really in dairy country here. So I kind of have to mix it myself. Good girl. Good girl. 
super important to train your dairy cow um, as best you can. Hazel knows a few commands. She knows back, that's back up. She knows step, um, and she knows which foot to step by how I'm touching her leg. You're okay, you're okay. She thought I wanted her to step. She's a good girl. Um, and she knows let's go. So when she's haltered and I, you know, give her a quick little tug on the rope and say, let's go, she knows to go. Um, so I'm gonna clean her up and while I'm cleaning her up, I'm gonna explain what we feed. Um, we do, there's, so uh, there's not a lot of dairies around here. Um, the dairies that are around here typically grow their own feed. Um, so they, you know, they grow the grains right there on site at the farm. We don't have the ability to do that. We just got to this farm last year and, and I don't know how much we'll ever be able to grow. Um, we're gonna do our best as far as grass goes and a little bit of feed plot and stuff. But as far as putting her in the stanchion and what we feed her in here, I don't think we'll be growing that. Um, but so there are a lot of beef farms around though. And so the uh, feed mill does a ranch mix. That they call it a ranch mix and it's a 15% protein. Ideally, you want a 16% protein for a dairy cow. Um, she's pretty clean today. So what I do is overnight, I soak a scoop of shredded beet pulp, which is pretty dry. I soak a scoop of alfalfa pellet and a scoop of a uh, good quality goat feed. Um, it has a mix of grains and oats and um, cracked corn and molasses. And a little bit of rice bran uh, and then we do a splash of apple cider vinegar in there and um, then in the morning I add four scoops of that dry 15% ranch mix and um, she seems pretty happy on that I've been able to put weight on her while she's in lactation that's pretty difficult to do um, especially for her she's just hard to keep weight on anyways but she's she looks great first part. Hopefully it'll leave me alone. Okay, so we're milking. Hazel's eating. She's doing just fine. I don't need to close her in that head catch. She does better with it open where she can recall her feed. Here are her milk lines. Going through the machine. I'm going to adjust this pulsator a little bit. It sounds a little fast. She likes it a little slower. It gets bumped. And there's our pump. I did a separate milking video, so I'll try to link that. And then here we have Miss Dolly just waiting her turn. Kitty's enjoying milk. One of them already gave up. So I only use two inflations at a time, and I just got them moved over. So that's what that looks like. But you want to see a problem I'm having? Dolly. This guy, he's almost a year old, and he needs to be weaned. We separated him to a field way back there. And I'm gonna zoom in, see that board right, let's see. Right, see that board in the middle there? Just over those bottles. Um, he jumped the fence and broke the board trying to get over here back to his mama. So he roamed the yard yesterday morning. Um, so I still haven't gotten a chance to try and milk her. So, yeah, it is what it is. We'll get it done. All right, so taking care of these little Cornish cross meat chicks. Um, here's a little tip. So chicks like to get in their water and kill themselves. So put some rocks in there. The only downside is that whenever you clean out their water, um, and give them fresh water, you kind of have to rinse off all those rocks as well. So um, we once had a batch of meat chicks. <laughs> once, it was the last batch. We had a batch of meat chicks that um, within 20 minutes of putting them in their little brooder, they all decided to try and kill themselves by drowning. Uh, so this, this little trick works. Y'all see this mess? This is me um, potting up seedlings. I've got all of these tomatoes to pot up. 
This is Miss Dolly Girl. Um, I've got all this mess. We had a bunch of feeders and waters that were left here by the prior owners um, since we bought the farm with animals and um, some other things that go along with them. And then we brought some feeders and waters as well. And so, um, yeah, we, we didn't want to throw anything away because we weren't sure what we wanted to keep for the moment. And so now it's time to install some shelving and get this stuff put away. So at this point, I'm waiting on Hazel to finish her food. It's going to take her a little while. She likes to finish every last morsel. Um, so while I'm waiting on her to do that, I'm going to go ahead and filter milk and um, clean up my machine the most I can before she's done. Uh, I'm actually going to take my boots off. So here we go. All right, so this is what our milk filter looks like. It's basically like a piece of paper, so it's a little disposable filter. It fits inside of this funnel. with a ring that presses down in the middle to hold it in place. So it looks like that. So then this fits perfectly on a white mason jar. the jars I just use a sharpie to write the date So when I use this filter, um, I'm looking for a few things. Um, first off, I'm looking for any hairs or dirt, any debris that might have fallen in the bucket. Um, those are caught right here in the filter. So you can see a speck of dirt, there's a hair, a couple of hairs, that happens. Secondly, I'm looking for any signs of mastitis and that would be any clumping in her milk. Um, we don't see any of that. That's pretty rare that we have that problem. Um, if we do, it's right after she freshens or when she's transitioning to once a day or weaning calves. Um, but pretty, pretty rare anyways. So yeah, that's it. Just clean milk. All right, so this is the milk that we got from Hazel today. She's now officially giving less than a gallon and a half. These are half gallon mason jars, so that's a gallon and a quart. Um, it is what it is. I expected her to drop production and that's a good thing. Uh, she has to dry off and 
two or three short months anyways before she calves again. So it's good that she's dropping. Um, she's going to put her energy into her calf. And I'm not going to have to worry about drying off a milk cow who's giving three or four gallons a day. That's difficult and um, often causes mastitis. So I just came out from filtering milk and look who's finished. All right, watch out, baby. Okay, so Hazel's going to go out. Good girl, thank you. <clears throat> come on, Dolly. Dolly's going to come in. I'm gonna get her feed though. Where's my food? All right, so shut the gate so no one else bothers her in here. How you like this? Gate clasp, Eric made. He's pretty handy that way. This is her yearling who wants in, not just for her milk, but for her grain. So Dolly is finished and she was waiting on me. And so in her waiting, she got aggravated and she peed in here. And that's just the way it goes sometimes. Come on, Dolly girl. All right, thank you. Have a good day. I'm sorry you had to wait on me. No, you're not coming back. No, no, no. <laughs> no, me. All right. That's just how it goes sometimes. Um, so cows will poop and pee when they are frustrated with you. Sometimes, I mean, it is what it is. Sometimes they, you just got to go. Sometimes when they're learning to milk and they're learning what that let down reflex feels like to let their milk down, um, especially like first time heifers, <clears throat> they, they just pee, they just, they relax and all of it comes out. Um, sometimes that happens. That I think was a case of, Hey, nobody's paying attention to me. Let me out. So, um, but it's fine. That's why we're on concrete. I can just hose that right out. Okay. So all hosed out and, um, milk machines cleaned. These cows are taken care of On to the next thing. Um, so the next thing is going to be letting these goats out. Um, I need to take some pictures of them. They're going to be ready to go to new homes in about a week or end of this week. And um, so I'm going to snap some pictures, let them out, and um, move on to the beef cows. So here are some of the beef girls. This is our Belle with the white face. Uh, she's a keeper, she's a breeder. We love Belle. Um, she came to us from another, from a friend's farm. And the deal was we can have her, we can't eat her. <laughs> so, which is fine. I think she was a bottle baby. And um, so she's, she's very handled and very sweet. And then this is Rose. We're keeping her also as a breeder. Um, she is Belle's two-year-old heifer, and this is Reba. This is her one-year-old heifer. <clears throat> so a question we get frequently is, what is that sticker on your cow? <laughs> what is that? So it's a sticker that scratches off um, just, just like a BB gun target um, so that we can tell, since we are artificially inseminating now, we don't, we're not keeping any bulls anymore um, at this point that um, this, this will scratch off when another cow rides against her because she's in heat and that will tell us that she's in heat and it's time to call our AI tech to come out and um, have her bred. So these girls are eating, doing well. And we've got a couple other steers down there and that's them. All right, the last thing I need to do is get to the garden this morning. Last thing this morning I need to do is get to the garden and I'm gonna pick some kale to go with eggs for breakfast. Um, look at this arugula, this is so pretty. Man, it feels nice today. I mean, it's chilly, which I don't love, but the sun is shining and the warmth feels so good. After a day of a cool, um, it just was gray and rainy yesterday. Today, everything looks so green and um, just like 
is so nice. It's beautiful. So these are some Lacinato kales. I'm just going to pick a few of the bottom leaves. This one looks a little brown. I'm just going to drop it. I need a lot. Just enough for me. Uh, nobody else really loves things in their own in my house. The birds are singing. This tat soy flower is beautiful too. I love it. It's so pretty. I see some zinnias sprouting. I've got a zinnia in the walkway coming up. Oh my gosh, I love, love, love zinnias. Look at all of these. These are all zinnia seeds germinating. I think that is a marigold. How funny. I'm not sure if I had marigolds in there or not. I don't remember. All right, that's the end of morning chores. That's just the basic things that have to happen. Everybody has food and water. Um, nobody's dying. <laughs> um, I joke, but that's, I mean, that's the reality. That's, that's what happens first thing in the morning. So I'm gonna go in with my kale, make some eggs, and get on with the rest of my day of growing food. Okay, so I've been out and about a little bit and the next thing on the to-do list today is I need to dump this compostable kitchen scrap. So I keep this little canister on my countertop and um, I'm slowly filling a trash can in our walk-in freezer, so I'll show you. So that compost is just kitchen scraps. It's um, eggshells, coffee grounds, tea bags, any odds and ends when I'm chopping vegetables like uh, the ends of tomatoes, peppers, onions, onion skins, garlic peels, um, any of those food scraps that can get composted down, um, throwing them right in. I don't put any um, like fats in there. I don't put any... Um, animal products in there. I know that you can if you have a big compost outfit. I'm doing this compost stack with um, just leaves and cardboard will be my brown matter and then I've got a trash can I'm filling for my green matter. So that's cool and exciting. So stay tuned for more on that.